Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about an important development in uh, communication in the last couple of decades, and that is the global positioning system. Uh, this is a system that uses electromagnetic communication in order to pinpoint the position of anyone on Earth. So let's get started. The global positioning system is a system of 24 satellites that are in orbit around the Earth. Right? They were launched up there over a series of uh, a fair number of years. Each satellite contains a very, very precise clock on board. It also contains a radio transmitter, which sends out information about this clock. The satellites will continually emit microwaves, which will go uh, down to the surface of the Earth, and the microwaves contain information about the exact time at which they were emitted. Right? And that time will be according to its very, very accurate atomic clock. Now a GPS receiver can receive these microwaves that the satellites are sending out. Right? And if it receives a number of different signals from different sat satellites, it's able to figure out its position. It does this with something called trilateration. And in order to use trilateration, it needs to be able to decode the time signals sent by each satellite. So why are the time signals useful? Well, the receiver uses the messages in order to calculate the distance to each satellite. And we can see the equation that you do that with over here. Does it seem familiar at all? We know that the receiver has to be somewhere on the surface of the Earth, right? And we know the exact location of the satellite. And we know the time at which the satellite sent its signal. So if we have three satellites, and they're all sending a certain, amount, uh, a certain time from their clock, we can determine exactly how long it took for each message to get there, right? So that's our value for t. We know that the messages travel at the speed of light, and so that's c, and we know that distance equals speed times time. So by taking the time delay of the clock reading, multiplying the speed of light, we can get the distance between the receiver and the satellite. So why is this useful, I hear you ask? Well, it's not useful if we have only one distance on its own. But if we have more than one, then it can be very, very handy. The problem with a signal like this is that although we know this distance, we don't know whether it's uh, straight down this way, or maybe if it's down this way, or maybe if it's behind this fellow or in front of this fellow. Something like that. That could be the same distance, but it's quite a different location. In fact, if we have the signal for only one satellite, then if we know that, if we know exactly where the satellite is and exactly our distance from it, then our location could be anywhere on a little circle on the surface of the Earth, right? And all the points on the circle will be exactly the same distance from the satellite. But we don't have only one satellite. We have lots. 24, in fact. So that at any point on the Earth's surface, you'll always have at least three satellites communicating with you. So if we know the distance to one satellite, then we can narrow down our location to a circle, right? We're not somewhere inside the circle, we're somewhere on the edge, but we have no idea where. So let's look at what another satellite says our location is. It will also give a possible circle uh, of locations, right? So if we have two satellites, we get a second circle, but this second circle will cross over with the first, right? And that means that if we have to be on the edges of both circles, 
then there are only two places we can be at. We can be at the top intersection or the bottom intersection. There's no other point on either circle that will match up with the data from the first circle we got. We have to be on the edge of both of these circles at the same time. So what if we ask a third satellite where we are? Well, it'll give us a circle of possibilities too. And if we combine that with the first two circles of possibilities, we end up with only one location. Remember that these circles will probably not all be the same size. They'll more often be very different sizes, depending on whether the satellite is directly overhead or maybe uh, quite a fair distance off from where you currently are. Now if we use modern technology and transistors and microchips and things like that, then we can build very, very small GPS receivers. The mathematics for trilateration aren't all that complicated. We don't need a supercomputer to do them. So these tiny little GPS receivers, once they receive signals from three different satellites, can very rapidly calculate exactly where they are based on the readings from GPS satellites. And because the clocks on board the GPS satellites are so accurate, if you wanted to be clever, you could have your GPS receiver also tell you the time. And it'll be able to tell you the time to a great amount of accuracy because of how good the clocks on board the satellites are. Remember that the clocks need to be able to time the difference between the light leaving the satellite and the light arriving at the receiver. Light travels so incredibly fast that there's not going to be very much of a delay. The clocks need to be accurate enough to measure that delay to a great deal of precision. So if you have a GPS receiver, then you can uh, both tell the time and pinpoint your location using the very accurate distances you get from those times. So what do we use it for? Well, uh, you know as well as me that we often see GPSs in cars or taxis uh, combined with a computer system that will tell you exactly where to go to get to a point on the map. We can also see them uh, in tracking applications. So we could attach a GPS receiver to a turtle, for example, and that would tell us exactly where the turtle was. We can also use it for espionage or to track the locations of a suspect uh, in a criminal case or for fun. There are some people who will uh, give the locations, the latitude and longitude of a buried treasure, for example, and people can use a GPS device in order to figure out the exact location of that treasure. Finally, we can use it for timekeeping one of the more uh, novel uses of it, I suppose. Uh, we call it Global Positioning System for a reason. It's built in order to locate things on the surface of the Earth. However, because the clocks on board are so accurate, we don't need to use it for positioning. We can use it for timekeeping as well. So that's the end of the theory. We've learned a bit about how the GPS system works and exactly how it uses trilateration to narrow down exactly where you are on the surface of the Earth. Let's go on to some questions. Question 11. What does GPS stand for? Is it Global Pathfinding Satellite, Global Pinpointing Satellite, Global Positioning Satellite, or Global Positioning System? Well, we have a few options, so let's go through them. Let's start off with A, Global Pathfinding Satellite. Now we know that we can use GPS in order to figure out the route from one place to another place, but GPS won't do that on its own. We need to combine the GPS data with a computer that has a map of where we are. The GPS simply tells us our location on that map. B says global pinpointing satellite. Now this seems a bit closer because we can use trilateration to pinpoint our exact location on the Earth, right? But pinpointing isn't really a particularly scientific way of saying things. 
So I think we'll let it go for the moment. How about C? Global Positioning Satellite. This is the closest one yet. Positioning seems like a pretty scientific word. The problem is, the S of GPS does not stand for satellite. Uh, it consists of a whole bunch of satellites orbiting the Earth, right? But that's not a single satellite, that's 24 different satellites. So it's not just a satellite, it's a system of satellites. So GPS stands for Global Positioning System, and D is the right answer. The system will use satellites to pinpoint the position of an object on the surface of the Earth. And then we can find paths to it by using uh, appropriate maps and technology. Question 12. What sort of electromagnetic wave do GPS uh, satellites emit? We have ultraviolet light, visible light, infrared light, or microwaves. Now we know from our study on electromagnetic waves that the sun produces most of these, but a lot of them get blocked by the atmosphere. The three brightest uh, wavelengths that get through are ultraviolet light, visible light, and infrared light. So because these are emitted by the sun and are so bright, any signals emitted by a satellite in these wavelengths would get swamped out pretty fast. So for this reason, we use microwaves, that is, uh, very short wavelength radio waves to transmit data. Question 13. It takes a very small amount of time for a certain GPS satellite signal to reach its receiver. Calculate the distance between the satellite and receiver. Can you remember how we do this? Well, it's simply distance equals speed times time. So we have a speed, 3 times 10 to the 8, the speed of light, times time, 0 0.075 seconds, to end up with an answer of 2.25 times 10 to the 7 meters, or 22,500 kilometers. So this is how far away the satellite is. Part B. If the satellite's clock is off by one millisecond, that is one thousandth of a second, what difference will it make to the answer? Well, to find the answer to this question, uh, all we need to do is take the change in time, that is 0 0.001, and multiply it by the speed. Surely one millisecond couldn't throw the estimate off very much, could it? Well, let's find out. Uh, so, what we do, we take 0 0.01 seconds, multiply it by the speed of light, and we'll end up with an answer of 3 times 10 to the 5 meters. That's not very much, is it? Well, if we convert it to kilometers, we can see that it's actually 300 kilometers. So it does make a fair amount of difference to where the GPS thinks you are. This is why it's so important to have uh, such accurate clocks on board the GPS systems, uh, GPS satellites rather. If they're off by even a tiny amount, then we can get huge uh, error in the prediction of our locations. Question 14. Suppose it's possible to use any sort of satellites to calculate uh, a position. Is it possible to calculate the receiver's location using any three satellites? If we can look at any satellite in the sky at all? And explain why or why not. Now I mentioned before that if we have three circles and they all overlap, at a common point, then we know that that point must be where the GPS receiver is, right? So it looks like as long as we have three satellites of any distance from us, we should be able to tell where we are. But that's not quite true. Supposing that instead of those three satellites, we had two satellites that were directly above the same spot on Earth, right? We might have one in a very low Earth orbit, and we might have another one very far away, but at the same spot, right? Just higher up into space. 
And then we have a third satellite over here. Uh, the third satellite will draw the circle just as we expect. But both of these first two satellites will draw circles that are pretty much identical. And that gives us a problem. We can't tell the difference between these circles well enough to figure out whether we're at this top point or this bottom point. One of these lines uh, will represent the overlap accurately, one of them won't. But the thing is, the circles are so similar that we can't actually tell the difference between them. Right? So we need to make a bit of an anendum to how trilateration works. We can't just use any three satellites. If we have two satellites that are over exactly the same location on the Earth's surface, then we won't be able to get this to work. What we need to have is three different satellites that are at different locations on the Earth's surface. And as long as we satisfy that criteria, we should be able to get the trilateration working properly. Finally, question 15. If a GPS receiver is on the Earth's surface, it, only needs, it needs exactly three satellites to ascertain exactly where it is, right? But if it's floating in deep space, it doesn't need three. It needs a different number. So what is this number? Well, let's think about this for a moment. When we're on the surface of the Earth, then one satellite gives us a circle of possibilities on the surface, right? But if we're in deep space and we know our distance from a satellite, that means that we could be that distance away from the satellite in any direction. We could be in a sphere around that satellite. So if the receiver knows its distance to the satellite, we end up with a sphere of possibilities. Now if we have two satellites, then that's two spheres, right? And they're going to have to overlap each other. So what we have is two spheres overlapping. Now we'll have this little boundary of intersection. One part of the intersection is on the front, one's on the back. And so we end up with a circle of possibilities where the spheres cross over. Now this looks a little bit like our circle of possibilities on Earth. Because remember with Earth, we have the one sphere that we're standing on. And we know our distance to the center of the Earth. So knowing the distance from another uh, object, in this case a satellite, gives us a circle of possibilities. So what we need is just one more. One more sphere than in the two-dimensional case on the surface. So the second sphere will overlap with the first sphere and create a circle of possibilities. A third sphere will create two possible points and a fourth sphere will determine which of those two possible points is correct. So that's the end of the questions, uh, which means we're at the end of the section, and almost the end of the module. So in this section we've learned about GPS, we've learned about exactly how it works and how trilateration works, and how we can use the distance between three different satellites to ascertain our exact location on the surface of the Earth. Yeah.